Okay, time for cleaning. First, let's remove the oil filter adapter. I bought this when I installed the engine. I think it was like 13, 12, 13 bucks, something like that. That's too bad it tore that gasket. Because this block came with a uh, an angled adapter for the oil filter. So now we'll get to work removing all the plugs, except this one. I mentioned last time, I already replaced it, and I don't really want to deal with it. So, all the steel plugs coming out. So on the passenger side of the block, there's two 1 5 8 plugs and a little coolant plug. If you already drained the coolant, instead of dumping it on the floor, you will have taken this out already. This is an 8-point square drive socket. These are handy to have. Okay, that's it for this side. Driver's side is the same way, two 1 and 5 8 plugs and a threaded plug. This is a problem you're likely to encounter with rusty old plugs. If your plugs are thin or rusty or just really in there, you'll end up busting them off completely. And uh, it's one way to get them out. Just smash the whole thing into pieces, really. Again, just be careful with the cast iron bore. Managed to get that one out without having to mangle it. I mean, mangle it too much, I guess. Yeah, that's nasty. Some of these don't have enough space behind them to actually pop them all the way through. So you wanna just knock it out like normal and then twist it as far as you can. Just remember, you're hammering against the other side of the cylinder wall, so you wanna be careful. Once you can grab it, you grab it. Pull it out just like any other plug. If you just look at it, those front plugs are right in between the two cylinders so you have more space. These back plugs are right up against that cylinder. And of course, the same threaded plug that was in the other side. If you compare the one we just took out against another plug, you can see exactly what happened. It corroded off the whole end of the thing. Can't even tell what's really left in there. It completely broke down. Holy cow, it just disintegrated. I knew there was some nasty stuff in this coolant system. I didn't know it was that bad. Okay, now with that out of the way, there are two one and five eighths inch plugs and three half inch plugs for the front oil galleries. We'll get to these in a minute. For right now, we're just gonna take out the one and five eighths inch plugs. This next one is what's usually called the hidden plug. And it's right down in this oil passage. It's underneath the main cap. This goes straight through to the oil pressure sender port on the top end. Let's flip the thing over. And I've just got this, this steel rod. I just get it in there up against that plug and tap it. That's all there is to it. The trick here is not forgetting to put this plug back in. Also on the front, a little out of the way, there's another little threaded plug up top. Now right next to the oil pressure port, there's another quarter inch plug. That feels dangerous. Oh boy. Let's put some heat on that. You do have exceeded the heat rating of that RTV. Okay, let's take another go at this. she needed was a little encouragement. It's 
So we spin the thing around and look at the plugs on the other side. We've got two one and five eighths inch plugs and one, two, and I believe two thirty seconds inch, the big cam plug, and these three little threaded quarter inch NPT plugs. I'm not sure if all blocks have these threaded or just the newer ones. They might have half inch caps like the other side does. But what we're gonna do once we knock all these out is thread the front end and use these screw in plugs for all of them. These are a bit tricky with the engine on the stand, but I really don't want to take it off. Okay, fine. You wanna play like that? As usual, I'm not telling you guys to do it the way I'm doing it, but eh, it's empty. It doesn't weigh all that much. It'll be fine. You wouldn't be acting like this if you were my real son. Oh. Okay, now let's see if the other one wants to play ball. I'm gonna have to move this guy in the same way. Why can't your brother be more like you? The easiest way to get to the big plug is through the cam journals. And now it's time for another fancy tool. This is just a nice long 3 8 extension. And I just shoved a piece of old wire split loom on it. Just You could use a piece of hose or tape it up or do something just so it's not directly hitting the cam bearings. Run all the way through here and knock that plug out. Right up against it. And there we are. The plug came right out of there. This is a two foot extension and it is just the perfect length. And now to the three little piggies. And now to the three little piggies. How about the plugs on the other side? Well, remember the other methods we just used? Yep, same deal. Now these have actually been peened in. You can see the little edges nipped here with a chisel. That would keep them from backing out. We'll see, if, if they don't want to come out, we might have to file that off or something. No problem. I'm watching these across the room to ensure I can never find them ever again. Yep, gone forever. Good job. So, well, there's two more of these somewhere in that junk pile. If you keep all the old ones, when you're putting it back together, you can make sure you have the exact right number of parts going back in. So as I mentioned, we're going to take a pipe tap and have three threaded plugs in these holes instead of the press fit ones. Why? Well, it's easier to take apart in the future, and you never have to worry about oil pressure pushing these out. Now, a tap handle here would be ideal, but I don't actually have one that'll fit onto this quarter inch NPT pipe. But again, I have another eight point square drive socket. Like anything else, get it as straight as you can to start with, and then try to keep it that way. Every once in a while, get reverse, break the chip. Now because pipe threads are tapered, it will self-center pretty well, but you also have to be cautious of the depth. And you want to make sure the plugs are going to go in the right depth with the right amount of force. But I'll cut this a little deeper. I think that's probably a good depth, so I'm just going to mark it, wrap a little piece of tape around it, and go ahead and cut all the threads to that depth. Yep, that's about perfect right there. Ok, 
Okay, that should do it. Something you definitely have to be careful of is in this center passage, there's another passage traveling vertically down to the cam bearing. So whether you use a threaded plug or a press fit one, if you push that plug in too far, you're gonna block off oil to the front of the cam. And of course, you don't wanna do that. So make sure after you thread your plug in or press it in, it is not covering up that passage. We just have to make sure when we clean it, we get all the shavings out. One easy way to clean a lot of this up is just a good old magnet. I won't guarantee you'll get everything, but you can get a whole lot of it out. Since we're not taking the cam bearings out, I'll have to really blow this whole thing out to make sure there's no shavings left in there. Next, I'm just gonna take a razor blade, a scraper, stuff like that, and try to get off as much of the, the big stuff as I can. Just like scraping any gasket, the whole idea is you wanna get up under it with a nice sharp blade and just lift it off the surface. I'm also gonna go ahead and take this stud out. It'll be a little easier to clean the gasket surface that way. I can't quite fit a socket in there on the stand, so I'm just gonna turn it out carefully. Vice grips. Almost forgot, one more plug. Nobody's perfect. As we go, we're gonna start spraying it down with WD-40, try to get all the water off of there, try to keep everything from rusting. Now that we have it rinsed off and a lot of the gunk is gone, I think first I'll hone the cylinders and clean out all the bores and stuff that I can and wire brush the rest of this gunk off that's on here, chase all the threads, and then rinse it off again. So we'll start with honing the cylinders. But now that I've taken better looks at these cylinders, they're actually not as good as I originally thought. This is the worst one, the worst offender. And you see these dark spots? That is pitting from rust. I might have to get a little aggressive with that cylinder. The other ones are all in pretty good shape. So I'm certainly no expert on cylinder honing, but I just bought this flex hone. This is a four and an eighth inch, 240 grit. The whole idea is you're smoothing everything out nice and even, and then on the last pull, you pull it out nice and quick because you want a 45 degree crosshatch pattern. And the manufacturer recommends no more than 20 or so seconds in a cylinder. I'm just using this old drill. You really want somewhere like 400 or 500 RPM, and you want a pretty constant speed to get a good even line. And like most applications of WD-40, the more, the better. You can get honing fluid or you can use motor oil, stuff like that. But uh, I've seen this recommended enough, we're just gonna go ahead and try this. I 
Definitely lots of material. Probably mostly grit from the uh, stones. Looks like it could use more than that and I should go a bit faster. You can definitely feel the roughness of the cylinder after that 240 grit. I think I need a slightly slower drill speed and a slightly faster plunge speed. I can still see these score lines that are too light to feel with a fingernail or anything, so I haven't removed much material. So I can probably give this a couple more tries on the cylinder. I was just holding the trigger all the way down and going very fast. This definitely makes a mess. This is why I want to make sure I get all this grit cleaned up. That looks pretty good. I think the speed I was just using was working just fine and I just need to do it for longer because the 45 degree is really visible in some areas but in some areas the, uh, the shallower old angle pattern is still visible. That is not half bad. I can actually see the angle of the pattern pretty well in the, the grime left in the cylinder and it looks like a pretty good 45. This is the cylinder with the worst pitting. I'm gonna give this one extra special attention. This is also the cylinder that had the head gasket leak. So Maybe a coincidence, maybe not. Still see where that pitting is, but it is getting harder to see. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to take that pitting out. It's about halfway down the cylinder, so it actually shouldn't be too high pressure there. Probably wouldn't affect the seal all that much. I don't think it really showed up in the compression test before. Okay, that's about it. I think we are done honing. Doing that outside was a good idea, but I should probably move the camera if I'm gonna film it again. Messy. I'm just taking a, a stiff plastic pipe cleaner, running it through all the oil galleries, everything like that that I can. Now I'm gonna run a tap through all the important holes. You'd ideally want a thread chaser, not a tap, but this is what I got. And we'll do the same for all the pipe plugs. Instead of running the tap through it, I'm just gonna run a bolt in. Make sure it's smooth. These threads are a bit tougher because they end up with thread sealer and stuff in them. Cylinder head bolt holes are the most important to clean the threads out on, both because equal torque is so important, but also because these go through to the coolant passage, so you've got to have sealer on them. And if the threads are not super clean, you can definitely get leaks that way. Now I'm just gonna take this stiff bristled plastic brush, run it through all the lifter bores. Okay, I think that'll about do it. Time for the final rinse. 